All right, let's look at the road map. <laughs> a lot to cover here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the order will be China politics, China rise, and then our case in order. I'm going to, yeah, our case in order. <clears throat> Is there anybody not ready? Okay, here we go. Let's start with China politics. I have five responses. First, linear brink means nothing for this disadvantage because they can't show you evidence of how close our plan gets you to the actual impact. Without the agricultural specific evidence, their disadvantage doesn't stick. Second, the point we've shown you 90 examples like our plan that haven't caused the impacts, then you can't give this DA enough weight to reject the affirmative plan. Third, pull across our no-link argument. They have nothing after both constructive speeches that say our plan would trigger this disadvantage specifically. Without this link evidence, then you must reject the DA. Fourth, pull across the turn from the 2AC. The warrants tell you that the Communist Party looks at the stable economy as the key to political st stability. In addition, cross supply are harder in 2016 from the solvency that tells you that China wants to do the plan because they know it's key to the economy and you know that it's seen as an economic win. And fifth, the affirmative wins the link debate of this argument because our turn hinges on the ag for the economy and political stability, whereas the negatives link argument is generic. Now let's move on to China rise. I have three responses. First, this disadvantage is still non-unique. There is no evidence that says China would start growing their military if we started trading agricultural technology with them. Seems like more than a far stretch. Second, we concede that we link. However, we continue to contend, contend that growing the Chinese economy is a good thing because of the turn that we offered. And third, pull across that turn from the 2AC. This is the Morrison in 2015 evidence. The warrants gives you the biggest reason to see that the disadvantage is actually an advantage. The more we increase the Chinese economy, the more China will fall into the international order. They would be too economically involved to start a war. So Starting a war means they would starve their own economy because of the lack of trade. That doesn't even make logical sense, and therefore this disadvantage turns into an advantage. Next, let's go to case. Start with inherency. We have one response. We are winning the stock issue debate for... Uh, th three to none. When you pull across our evidence, you quickly see the picture of the status quo, which is that people in China are starving. China can't feed its people, and there isn't a policy in place that allows the U.S. to trade ag technology and expertise with Chinese. With the Chinese, once you understand that this is the status quo, and only the affirmative offers a solution, you vote AF. Move on to solvency. I have two responses here. First, the 1AC evidence does tell you that the U.S. is key. It also tells you that the U.S. is the global leader in the sector. We expand in China, a market that we are not currently well-developed in, which is the U.S. SBC in 2014 evidence from the Advantage 1. Then you know China will want the plan to pass. And second, China might mistrust the United States on a variety of issues, but one area that they need to trust us on is within this agricultural sector. They have starving people that need to be fed. To the point that our solvency evidence quotes Xi Jinping himself saying that we need this deal, then you you know it, it, it's what you vote for when you vote for the affirmative today. China will take it. You should have no doubt China would say yes to the U.S. agricultural sector uh, technology trade. Move on to advantage one. I have two responses. First, whether Chinese economy is good or bad or whether or not manufacturing is the biggest contributor, we will help the Chinese economy post plan. Hands down. We boost the U.S. economy. Second, there is no no turn here. China won't see our steal our tech because of the BIT. The BIT increases tech security, total ownership, and no tech transfer from Frisbee and 14. A total top-down U.S. concern protecting technology would be improved by BIT. It's easier to protect your technology when, you're own, when you own 100% of your operation. BITs bar countries from requiring technology transfers and from providing unfair preferences for domestic technology. This evidence is key. That's what our plan does. It prevents the, the theft of agricultural technology. So they can't turn this into a disadvantage for themselves because we know that post-plan that the technology is secure and China won't be able to steal it. But next, let's move on to advantage two. I have a few responses. First, our evidence overwhelms their, them on this advantage. We are winning it. Second, the only argument that the negative has here is that China probably wouldn't let their people starve, but the point is that they are starving. They've admitted that they can't feed their people. At the end of the day, your vote for the affirmative has the ability to feed people who are starving, and this is the biggest impact that outweighs any potential negative impacts that they hold in the debate. But third, China's agricultural practices are structurally unequal. Foreign investment tra investments can transfer the sustainable agriculture technology for all farmers in China. Varuni in 12. China's economic growth has been uneven. Vulnerable groups are most affected. Unequal government supports to industry and agriculture neglect remote western rural areas. Food insecurity persists in a number of provinces. 130 million, most of those live in underdeveloped infrastructure and services, are among the poorest of the poor and amongst the most affected by food insecurity. The result has been an agricultural policy that often fails to address the needs of farmers in some of the most deprived areas, neglected by conventional crop research. Cut the card there. This evidence basically tells you that the poorest of poor, the ones who are 
starving. And the only way in which you can offer a policy today to stop that is by going against the status quo. We're the only option as the affirmative. The negative has actually failed to do their job, which is to protect the status quo. So when you vote for the, if you were to vote for the negative, you know that you're voting to allow a the starvation of millions of people. If you vote for the affirmative, you know that that's the number one priority that you have today, that you're going to take that on as a reason to vote on the for the affirmative is to feed the people. So at the end of the day, you know that you're going to get a plan that changes the status quo, it fixes those harms, it gains you the economy advantage, and it gains you the advantage of feeding the starving people all while avoiding those two disadvantages that we've actually turned. We've turned China politics and we've turned China rise. So no, those are actually two advantages to our plan, and I only see an affirmative ballot.